Hey guys, I'm Christine and welcome back to Christine's Culinary Quest. Today we're going to talk about how you can use red cabbage to make a whole bunch of different dye colors all naturally, pink, green, blue, and purple. I'm sure you're curious, right? How are we going to take red cabbage and get four different colors? Really what this boils down to is basic science, the stuff you learned in high school or you're gonna learn in high school, depends what level you're at right now. And it's all about pH levels, right? You remember the litmus strips and all that stuff from high school and chemistry and you know, all the things. So to create your dye, there's just a few simple steps. One. You basically take your red cabbage and cut it into one inch cubes, two. Once you finish chopping your red cabbage, you're going to transfer it to a pot so that you can boil it. You're gonna cover it with a couple cups of water so that just the top isn't submerged and then you're going to sprinkle it with salt. You don't have to use exact measurements here, but from what I've seen, about three tablespoons is good for a full head of red cabbage. You'll boil your cabbage in the water with the salt for about four to eight hours or until the volume inside of your pot has reduced to about half and you've boiled off as much liquid as possible to really concentrate that dye. At this point, a lot of the liquid should have cooked off already from the red cabbage and you should have a lot of color in your pot. Using a sieve or a strainer or a filter of some kind, you're going to want to press down on the cabbage to remove as much of the liquid as possible and you'll save all of that dye and liquid and either compost or throw away or eat your red cabbage that you have left. Uh, the red cabbage though, because you'll have boiled off a lot of the dye and therefore the nutrients and vitamins from the red cabbage, it won't have as much of a dietary value, but it's still very valuable in your diet as a source of fiber and therefore for your digestion. By itself, the cabbage liquid is going to be a pretty purple color, like a gem tone. If you want to take that purple color and you want to make it, say, pink, then you're going to add vinegar. And as you add the vinegar, the vinegar is going to adjust the pH balance of your liquid and it's going to make it pinker and pinker. Now, on the other hand, if you have your purple liquid and you want to make it blue, then you'll add some baking soda. And if you keep adding baking soda past the point where it becomes blue, then you'll get green. And that's how that works. And that's because the baking soda has alkaline in it and the alkaline is going to act as a base and interact with the colors that are already in your liquid to create a bluer tone by removing reds. So if you just want the blue color, you'll start with your purple liquid and you'll add baking soda one teaspoon at a time until it loses the purple edge. And that's all you have to do. If you want it to be green though, you have to take the baking soda and you have to add a little bit more and it'll still look fairly blue, but as it dries, whatever you've used to dye it is going to look slightly more green. But it's a very simple process and so I hope that that all made sense. And of course you can always comment down below and let me know if it doesn't and I'll be happy to continue explaining down in the comments. This process we've been discussing of adding acids and bases to change the color of your red cabbage dye it can be adjusted to get to other colors with the addition of other chemicals. Since red cabbage dye is a great indicator of pH balance, it responds really well to different chemicals, changing colors. Uh, however, depending on the acids and bases that you add, the color may only be usable for dyeing things like clothing, not things that people will eat or drink. For example, adding extra baking soda to turn red cabbage juice green from blue can make it too bitter. Uh, likewise, continuing to add acids until the juice changes from pink to red gives the dye an overly sharp flavor. Neither would work well to add to frosting because the flavor from the dye would affect the sweetness of the sugar. Uh, I will admit this is a very time consuming process. As we said, it's gonna take you four to eight hours. But if you are worried about artificial preservatives, all those different things in your food dyes, even though this is a long process, it will give you that less stressful, more friendly 
way of adding dye to your recipe. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Coming up, we're going to do more videos. I'm gonna try to ramp it up going forward, which is why I had that break where I wasn't uploading for a while while I tried to figure out how to upload more. Uh, but we're going to do a video on how to make huacha, which is a Korean fruit punch that's popular in the summer. And we're gonna go into a series of Korean recipes leading up to Chuseok in September. Uh, it's like a Korean Thanksgiving slash harvest festival. It's just a time for good food and family and hanging out and being grateful for what you have. So I hope you look forward to our huachai recipe coming up next and to the Chuseok series that we're gonna be starting next. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.